shall rise up to pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. Thank you, Lord, because you brought us together. Thank you for the great things you have done during this past week. Thank you, Lord, for the people who have been saved. And for those who have been healed. And for those who have been delivered one way or the other. Lord, we pray that these blessings and miracles will be permanent in Jesus' name. And we're asking, Lord, in the Bible study tonight, encourage every heart in Jesus' name. Strengthen everyone in the inner man. Help us, Lord, to understand and then to apply all these words to our lives. Be glorified in our study and worship, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can see now we're still in Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, we'll be looking at verses 25 to verse, to verse 34. And these 10 verses address an important subject. And it is a subject of worry and anxiety. As the Lord reminds us over and over, do not be anxious, do not be worried. Whatever happens, something similar had happened before. Whatever problem there is today, that problem had existed before and God solved the problem. And God still specializes in solving problems. He will solve your problems in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What shall we eat? Or what ye shall eat? Or what ye shall drink? Nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat, and the body more than raiment? And then he goes on in verse 30. Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? In verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You'll see as the Lord repeatedly says, Take no thought. And for new converts who are just coming, and for those who are just joining us, take no thought. Simply means, don't be anxiously thoughtful. Don't take thoughts to the point. Thought overwhelms you, overcomes you, overpowers you. What that means is, when something has happened, and you cannot find solution, and you cannot find an answer, then your mind begins to think. And the thoughts consume you. And you cannot think of any other thing. And those kinds of thoughts, they bring care, they bring worry, they bring anxiety, and they bring fear into your life. And the Lord is saying, don't take thought in that sense. For those who are new converts, maybe you are thinking, now I've come to the fold of the people of God. I'm just wondering what the future will be. That's why the Lord is saying, just relax, take no thought, there's nothing to worry about. In Ruth chapter 2, Ruth chapter 2, I'm reading from verses 11 and 12. Ruth chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It has fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother, and the land of thy nativity, and hath come unto a people that thou knewest not heretofore. Like you as a new convert, you have come to the Lord, and you have come to a church, and many of the people around you never knew them before. That's exactly what happened to Ruth. And then Boaz was telling Ruth, although you have just come, there's nothing for you to worry about. In verse 12, the Lord recompense thy work. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. 
you have come to put your trust in the Lord. And that Lord has been taking care of us and he will take care of every one of us. And you'll find as you just come to know the Lord, you might experience some a little, little problems with the people you've been moving with before. Now you cannot do what they're doing. You cannot go where they're going. And you cannot drink what, they are, what you were drinking before. You cannot go on with them in the sinful, sensual, worldly, licentious, a kind of adulterous relationship. And because of that, they will talk against you. They will, they will do something against you. We call that persecution. That's pressure. Wanting to get you back. But you see, when you are persecuted like that, again, there is nothing for you to worry about. I'm looking at Psalm 9 verse 9. Psalm 9 verse 9. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed and a refuge in times of trouble. If those are old friends, because you are cutting off from them. If those old people, because you don't want to remain in their gang again, they want to put pressure upon you and say, I'm worried about what's going to happen to me. Jesus said, take no thought. Because you have come to the Lord. And the Lord is a refuge. In verse 10, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee for thou lord has not forsaken them that seek thee or maybe it is now as you have come to know the lord uh, you have to forsake some things maybe you are in a cult or you are in the powers of darkness and those powers of darkness have been doing some things with you even at the covenant with them now you have broken that covenant and then they might appear to you in the day or in the dream. And they say, we hear that you have left our camp. You are no more in our gang. And you are no more with us in all those sacrifices you are doing. What are you going to do now? Then they threaten you. When they threaten you like that, as a new convert, a little fear might arise in your heart. What am I going to do? Look at these people. How they are threatening me. That's why Jesus said there's nothing to worry about. Take no thought for your life. But they will kill me. Take no thought for your life. They cannot kill you. I said they cannot kill anybody. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Give me a deeper life. Amen. That's why you don't worry. That's why you are not anxious. And many people you see around you in the Bible study, they too, they have faced some challenges like that before. And God overcame for them. And the Lord is telling you, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Maybe it is that... You are a fatherless person. You are a, an orphan. Or maybe you are a widow. And now you have come to know the Lord. And the people that have been kind of misusing your body before. And misusing your time before. And they have been giving you some little, little cobble. A naira or dollar or pounds or whatever. And now you have come to know the Lord. And you cannot do the things you were doing with them before. And then you say, what will happen to me? Will I not die of hunger? You will not die of hunger. Take no thought for your life. Don't worry about anything. We're told in Jeremiah chapter 49. And we're looking at verse 11. Jeremiah 49 verse 11. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. The Lord is telling the fatherless and the orphans, there's nothing to worry about. Leave them in my hands. I'll take care of them. And to the widows too, just give your life to the Lord and make sure that your covenant with the Lord is solid and secured. And he says, I will take care of you. The Lord will take care of you. Maybe you went into a covenant before. You now came to the Lord this last week. You were in that covenant. And then, you know, you have sucked blood. And they have sucked your blood too. And now you have come to know the Lord. And then somebody comes to remind you. Do you remember the covenant you made? And you know that if you break that covenant. You, you must be expecting something terrible to happen unto you. And that when you think about that. 
because you have just come to know the Lord and you do not know the power that holds the universe and the power that can keep you a little fear, a little anxiety may come to your mind but the Lord is telling us and telling you in particular in Zechariah chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 5 Zechariah chapter 2 looking at verse 5 for I says the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about that's a wall of fire around you and no evil arrow can penetrate that wall of fire and I will be the glory in the midst of her in verse 8 for thus says the Lord of hosts after the glory as he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you for he that touches you touches the apple of his eye they cannot touch you again in verse 13 be silent all flesh before the lord for he is raised up out of his holy habitation the lord will protect every one of us maybe you're in a, a kind of business ungodly business evil business you know there are many kinds of uh, business that people do and uh, some do business with their body they give their body sell their body into sin into evil like the prostitutes do like private prostitutes public prostitutes and then that's how they get money that's how they earn their living but now during this past week you gave your life to the lord and then you know now you cannot continue that kind of business you say ah, what am i going to eat what am i going to do that's exactly what jesus said don't worry about that take no thought for your life what shall we eat what shall we drink where with that shall we be clothed because it says god is on the throne he's taking care of the birds of the air the lilies in the valley and the lord will take care of you and you're, you're, going to, you're going to find out how God will be miraculously providing for you in, Je in Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Blessed is the man. That's exactly what you did if you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ during la this last uh, crusade. And you said, yes, I belong to Jesus now. I will not go in the ways of the world anymore. The ungodly business, selling alcohol, selling cigarettes, and, and selling destructive things that will destroy the lives of other people. I'm not going to do that anymore. I've given my life to the Lord. You are trusting in the Lord. Blessed is a man. And blessed is a woman that trusts in the Lord. Whose hope the Lord hears. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful shall not be worried in the year of drought neither shall neither shall cease yielding fruit you are going to be fruitful and because you have come to trust in the Lord, the Lord is saying he will take care of you and you shouldn't be worried and you shouldn't be anxious. Therefore, you are going to commit yourself fully, more fully to the Lord and say, as I've come to the Lord, I'm going to just keep in fellowship with the Lord. I'll not fear anything because he tells me, don't worry, don't be anxious, take no thought. Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee. When those troubles come, new converts, remember old converts too. Old believers too. Children of God, everyone. Remember, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You know, as you give your life to the Lord, maybe they threaten you. But then the word of God says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And then you may boldly say, say to yourself, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. They will not be able to do anything to you. And so the Lord is reminding us once again today. Believers, believers who are old in the church and believers who are new in the church, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? 
or what shall we drink or where with that shall we be closed if we believe God so for so great salvation can't we believe him for food and clothing didn't you see all those miracles that God performed in your own location and then the one that came on the screen the great things that he did if God could do those great great things don't you know he'll provide for your food and for your clothing if we have trusted him for the saving of our souls and we have entrusted our souls and the keeping of that soul unto the almighty God surely we can entrust the care of our body unto him as well if we believe that our father controls the affairs of the whole universe definitely we we know that he also will control the affairs of our lives if we believe that we are not in this world by accident god knows about your being in the world here and since you are not here by accident he obviously will take care of you he's a loving father a wise father a powerful father a faithful father a kind-hearted father a great father he'll take care of all your needs that's the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ says, Take no thought, be not anxious, be not worried, because the Almighty God will take care of you. We're looking at verses 31, all through to 33 today. Open your Bible with me. Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 31. Matthew 6, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, that means therefore be not anxious therefore be not fearful therefore be not worried therefore do not be excessively concerned about your life saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewith that shall we be closed for after all these things of the gentle seek after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. These things shall be added to your life. We're dividing the study to three parts. Number one, dependence on our Father's care. Dependence on our Father's care. Number two, demand of our first commitment. The demand of our first commitment. Number three now, we'll be looking also at the declaration for our full comfort. Let's go to number one. Dependence on our heavenly father as you look at matthew chapter 6 verses 31 and 32 therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be closed i'm going to make it personal now that means i'm going to i'm going to make it just singular look at it again it says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall I eat? Or what shall I drink? Or wherewith thou shall I be closed? You know, there's something they call self-talk. Self-talk means you are talking to yourself. Anytime you are just sitting down like this, as you are sitting down, you are talking to yourself. Your mind is talking to you. And your mind many times will be asking questions. What will I drink? What will I eat? Where will that shall I be closed? Where will I find this? Where will I get this? Where will I discover this? Every time you're talking to yourself. And it is that self-talk that weakens us. Because you know the way we talk to ourselves. I don't think I am, I am a prosperous. I think I am poor. I think I am unfortunate. I think I am weak. I think I'm not in the right place. And then we say, oh, am I in the right place? Do I have what it takes to live? Do I have this? Do I have that? And that self-talk is what destroys us. Even before the enemy comes to us, the self-talk we have already paralyzes us. And then it shows on our face, it shows in our attitude, it shows in our action. Because we have been talking to ourselves in such a derogatory way, in such a destructive way, as if we cannot 
actually make good in life. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, change the self-talk. And then say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Let the positive self-talk cancel the negative self-talk. All those questions, turn them around and turn them into the promises of God. And realize that because the Lord belongs to you and you belong to the Lord. You don't need to be talking to yourself negative anymore. Be positive on the promises of the word of God. And Jesus said, don't say, what shall I eat? Don't say, what shall I drink? Don't say, wherewith thou shall I be closed? And it says, for after all these things are the gentle seek. That if that's all your preoccupation, if that overwhelms you, and that's all you think about, and you're thinking in doubt, and you're thinking in fear, and you're thinking in anxiety, and you're thinking in worry, if that is all you're thinking about, then you're going to be weak. You'll not be looking at the promises of God. But understand, God is on the throne. And because God is on the throne, he will take care of me, he will take care of you. And then he tells us in Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. I'm reading from verses 29 and 30. Luke chapter 12 verse 29. In Luke chapter 12 verse 29. Here is what it says. And seek not ye what ye shall eat. Or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind and seek not ye what ye shall eat. What does that mean? Does that mean we shouldn't go to work? No. It means don't let this be your consuming passion. That you don't do any other thing. The only thing you're doing is just looking for food and looking for food and looking for food. Do you know there are people that take two jobs? Some take three jobs. And they wake up early in the morning from six o'clock. They go to a particular job. And then they do that until about two o'clock, eight hours. And then they go to another work. They're resuming by two or two thirty. And then they go on like that until ten. And then they promise another person, I'm going to you know be teacher I'm, I'm coming to teach your children i'm coming at 10 o'clock and 10 to 12 they're still teaching children and they're taking three jobs together at the same time what are you doing you're killing yourself there is time to sleep and time to rest and time to relax and time to enjoy the labor of your hand and time to just sit down and praise the name of the Lord. Don't let your life be a consuming kind of desire and pursuit of what to eat and what to drink and what to put on. Let your life be a balanced life. Your work, your rest, your relax. You even enjoy the work of your hands. You stay with your family. And you stay with your children. And you balance up your life. That's what the Lord Jesus is saying. He says, seek ye not. Don't let it be your consuming passion. That you don't do any other thing. Seek ye not. What ye shall eat. What ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. For these, all these things. Do the nations of the world seek after and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. And let's look at first um, Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. We're looking at verse 7. In first Peter chapter 5 verse 7. It says, casting all your care. How many of your cares? Tell me out loud. Yeah, I don't normally use uh, too many stories. I just use, uh, you know, the stories in the Bible. But, you know, once in a while, I think I need to tell you some stories. Uh, you see, the, I heard of a woman. I didn't see her myself, but I heard of her. And uh, she was a village woman. And then she was carrying a load, a basket full of crops from the farm. Carrying it on the, on the head. And she was staying by the side of the road. It was a dusty road. It was not like, it's not like, you know, these uh, tired roads. And a lorry was coming. 
And then the lorry driver saw my mat, you know, on the side of the road. And, you know, she just felt, this could be my mother carrying this load like this. And said, Mama, where, where are you going? And then Mama said, my son, I'm going to such and such a place. And then the driver said, now you can come in. And Mama said, but there's no money to pay. And the driver said, don't worry, Mama, you are like my mother, just come in. And Mama was so very happy. And then she came into the lorry. And she said, and the driver kept on driving. But you see, the driver looked at the mirror and then saw Mama. She was still carrying the basket of crops. And then the driver stopped and said, Mama, what's the matter? Why are you carrying this? You know, oh, he said, my son, you are so kind. And you give me, you know, this place to sit. Will you carry my load as well? And he said, you know, mama, I'm to carry you and carry your load. Maybe that looks funny to you. There are many believers like that. Jesus is carrying you. He's carrying your soul to heaven. And then you are carrying your load on your head. Why don't you put it down at the feet of Jesus? Just leave it there. Because Jesus Christ is taking you as well as your load. That's why it says casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. He will care for you. In Psalm 55, I'm reading from, uh, from verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. 55, verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Cast it upon the Lord. Everybody has challenges. Everybody has problems. Everybody has burden. But you know the difference is some people are carrying their bodies all by themselves. And it looks like the, the load is heavy for them. And they say it's not an easy road. Sometimes on the mountain and sometimes in the valley. And sometimes things are easy. Other times things are rough. And they're wondering, how will I go through life like this? I'm wondering with you too, how are you going to go through life like this? Because you are carrying a lot of load that you need to just put at the feet of Jesus. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never permit, never suffer the righteous to be moved. God will take care of you. Once we come to know the Lord, we give ourselves to the Lord, and then all the challenges of our lives, all the concerns of our lives, all the cares of our lives, all the worry, the anxiety, we just leave everything in the hands of the Lord. We give everything over unto the Lord. That's why the title of the message today is Leaving All Our Worries in God's Hands. Leviticus chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 3. Leviticus chapter 26 verses 3 to 6. Look at your outline. If it's different on your outline, correct it. Leviticus chapter 26 verses 3 to 6. Here is what it says from verse 3. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. Your rain will not be late. And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And then it says, your threshing shall reach unto the vintage. And the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full. Ye shall eat your bread to the full. Look up here for a minute. You know, if you're not reading the Bible, some people, they just make themselves suffer unnecessarily. They, are, they, are, they have worked. They have earned salary. Now they ought to eat. And they will not eat. They will be saving the money somewhere. And we say, my brother, are you not walking? I'm walking. Are they not paying you? They are paying me. Why are you not eating? You're looking, you're looking like you're emaciated. You're looking lean. It's like you're killing yourself. Oh, they say, I am saving money for such and such. What are you saving money for? I want to buy a car. Okay, you want to buy a car. You will buy a car, but your body will be ruined and wrecked. No food. You will have ulcer. And if you have ulcer and you are dying, even if you buy a car, what's the use of the car? Eat your food to the full. And then other people say, I'm saving money to, buy, to build a house. That's good to build a house after you have eaten. It's worry and anxiety. I will not eat. 
they will not wear clothes. They will not, the things that they ought to provide for themselves and take care of their body, it's not that they don't have the money. They are saving for another thing. It's a healthy man that enjoys living in a good house. If you have a good house, but your body is not well, what's, what's the use of that? And therefore, number one, when the Lord has provided for you, take of that blessing and then hire by the money to build the house. When they tend to build the house comes, God will provide the money. Ah, but the money to buy a car. When the time to buy the car comes, just feed well and be healthy and strong. When the time to buy the car comes, the money will come. I'm going to read that verse again. It says in verse 5, And your threshing shall reach unto vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land. And ye shall lie down. And none shall make you afraid. Ye shall lie down. And none shall make you afraid. Oh but somebody says. But I'm a Christian. And you know something makes me afraid. Who makes you afraid? Nobody makes you afraid. You make yourself afraid. Imagination. The thoughts. The care. The person you're afraid about is in his own house, he's sleeping. You think he's thinking of you? He has his own problem. He has his own problem. He's not thinking about you. He has problem with his own children, with his wife or with her husband. He has problem with the place of work. 99% of the time, the people are not thinking about you. They are thinking about themselves. But you think they are thinking about me. They are planning against me. And because of the thoughts you have in your hand, in your heart, you are killing yourself. They are not thinking about you. They are thinking about themselves. Leave all that fear alone. God will protect your life. I said God will protect your life. It says then none shall make you afraid. And I will read evil bees out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through thy land. In uh, Psalm 31. Psalm 31. I'm reading from verse 19. Psalm 31. We're looking at verse 19. Oh how great is thy goodness. Which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. Which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. In verse 20, thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city, you'll see the kindness of the Lord. Because himself has made the promise in Psalm 36 verse 7. Psalm 36 verse 7. Our excellence is a loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the rivers of thy pleasure. Make them drink of the rivers of the pleasure of the Lord. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light we shall see light. In the light of the Lord I will see, I will see light. I said I will see light. Psalm 81, reading from verse 13, Psalm 81 verse 13, oh that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies. New converts, all you need to do, as we learned yesterday, you come, come to Christ, you take, you take his yoke upon you. And then you learn, you learn of me, you learn of Christ. And as you have come, 
And you have taken the controlling your command and control of the Lord upon your life. And you're learning of the life of Christ. What will Christ do? And every step of the way, and every day of the week, and every week of the month, every month of the year, you're just following after the Lord step by step and line upon line, precept upon precept. It says, leave all those enemies in my hand. All you need to do is that you're hacking unto me. All you need to do is to walk in my ways. And then he says, I will subdue thine enemies and turn my hand against your adversaries. Then he says, the haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. It should have fed them also the finest of the wheat. And with honey out of the rock shall I have satisfied thee. The Lord will satisfy you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Reading from verse 8. I'm going back to verse 6. Start from verse 6. But this I say. He which sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. What the Lord is telling us, new converts and old timers, is that this life is a life of sowing and reaping. That what you sow is what you reap. If you sow something good, you reap something good. And if you sow something evil, you reap something evil. And if you sow sparingly, you sow just a little, then you will reap just a little. If you sow bountifully, then it says you reap bountifully. Then it says in verse 7, every man according as a purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. It says uh, well, we must now learn to give. Look at this uh, crusade time. Uh, all of us that attended the crusade, uh, you know that uh, we didn't collect money at the crusade. We just came and we gave. And Jesus Christ who has saved us, he didn't take anything from us. He just gave. And the Lord Jesus who has healed us, he didn't take any money. He just gave. And the Lord is saying, learn of me. Learn of me. I sacrificed myself so that you can be saved. And I bled on the cross of Calvary. I bore those stripes on my body so you can be healed. I came to this world to suffer so I can take you to heaven. I gave without taking anything away from you. Then learn of me. Give. And you give cheerfully. And you give happily. And you give joyfully. Then it says God loves a cheerful giver. When it says give, it's not just talking about money. You give your heart. You give your best to the Lord. You give your strength. You give your service. Other people have served us. And those of us at the crusade, did you see those ushers, those policemen, those soldiers, and those uh, singers, those musicians, and those people that made the announcement. They abandoned every other thing and they came to serve us. Now that they have served us, they have brought us into the kingdom. Which you must serve. We give our service. Because it is what you sow. You will reap. And then you not only give a service. You give love. And you give time. And you give your worship unto the Lord. I'm sure you know. You know one of the songs I was singing. Even though you've just come to know the Lord. If you've gone to you know the regular church. You'll be going to before you came to this crusade. Haven't you heard? Take my life. And let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. That is, here is my life. That's what I'm giving. And this is what the Lord is saying that now. As we're coming to, don't worry about anything. He'll take care of you. He's giving you salvation now. He has given you healing. He has given you deliverance. He has given you miracle. And then he'll still give you whatever you will need. All you are telling the Lord now is, Lord, no selfishness anymore. Take my life. Let it be consecrated, Lord, unto thee. Take my moments and my days. I give my time unto you. Let them flow in cease. Let's praise. But there's something you still need to give to the Lord. Take my will and make it thine. If there is anything we need to give to the Lord, it is a will. 
And if you give it bountifully, wholeheartedly, if you give it joyfully, then the Lord is going to abundantly reward you. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be be no longer mine. Take my heart. It is thine own. It shall be the royal throne. That is me. But you say, Jesus, I've given my life to you. And now, I want you to rule and reign. Reign, Master Jesus. Rule, Master Jesus. Every time you go on the street and you look up at the billboard and it says, rule your world. Then always sing. You are the one that Jesus Christ wants to rule over. Every time you see that, rule your world. Then you say, I'm going to give my whole world, my whole life, my heart, my mind, my will unto the Lord. Rule over me. Let that billboard be a reminder unto you. Take my love. My Lord, I pour at thy feet is treasure store. You're saying, Oh Lord, I have come to Christ. I'm not going to be a half hearted Christian. Somebody they have to push. And the people who are doing the follow up, they, they have got your address and they have got your card. And then they come to your house, they knock at the door. And then you say, Shall I answer them? Shall I not answer them? You answer them joyfully, happily. That's what it means to know the Lord because you're so eager now. I want them to come and show me how I will give myself fully, wholeheartedly to the Lord. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet his treasure store. Take my soul and I will be ever only and always for thee. That's what the Lord is expecting and if you do that, a great blessing will be upon your life in Jesus name. Now for those who have been Christians for a long time, have you forgotten how to give? How to give your time? How to give your treasure? How to give your talent? How to give your ability? How to give your strength unto the Lord? How to give worship adoration unto the lord how to patiently wait in the presence of the lord and give everything you've got unto the lord it says over here every man according as a purpose is in his heart so let him give not grudgingly of necessity for god loveth a cheerful giver and god is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. The Lord is telling us that we just depend upon him. Having real faith in our heavenly father. We stop worrying. We rest in Christ. Instead of being anxious. Like those who kill themselves gradually. With anxiety, with fear and cares. By faith, we expect divine favor and supply every day. The Gentiles, that is the people of the world, are downcast. And they are defeated by earthly circumstances because they live without God and without hope. In our own case, we have a God who cares. And we have Christ, our Savior, who is interceding for us at God's right hand every day and every moment. Why then should you be anxious? Why then should you ever allow the attacks of worry and anxiety? Neighbors may worry. Colleagues may be anxious. But we, who are the children of God, we have the great and the precious promises from God our Father. And those promises extend to the whole of life. There is no aspect of life that is not covered by these extraordinary promises of God are triumphant and laying hold on these promises, concentrating on them, trusting in God who cannot fail, who cannot lie. Take the promise of God at face value. Believe that promise of God. Rest on that promise of God. Meditate on that promise of God. Live by that promise of God. Control your thoughts, your tongue, your life by that promise of God. Focus all your attention on that promise and no circumstance will ever overcome you in Jesus' name. Let the words of God and the thoughts of God possess you at all times and in all circumstances. And worry will be a thing of the past. I come to point number two. The demand of our first love. The demand of our first love. Matthew chapter 6 again. Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6. By the way. Would you look up here for a moment. Uh, 
How many of you were at the crusade yesterday night? God bless you. I knew you were there. I know you have to be there. God bless you. Now, you know, we took a covenant yesterday. And a covenant we took yesterday because, you know, because we looked at the word of Jesus has come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest and take my yoke upon you. And then it says, and learn of me, for me can lowly, and ye shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy, and my body is light. And we saw there those three words of action, you come, and you have come. And then you take, you take his yoke, and then you learn of him. And then, at the end yesterday, we, make a, we made a commitment. And then we said, Lord, we're going to be learning. Learning from your word every day. That means then that when you wake up in the morning, no Bible, no, no breakfast. And then before you sleep at night, it means no scripture, no sleep. That means then you wake up in the morning, the first thing is the bread of life. Is this word of God. And then before you sleep at night, it is this scripture, the word of God. Why am I reminding you of that? I'm reminding you so that you will know how to take that bread of life. And you see how we study the Bible? And I'm trying to say this to the young people who have just come to know the Lord. When you have a bowl of food before you, you take a spoon at a time. And then as you look at the things we're studying, you see, we just take a bit at a time. A bit at a time. That's how you do it personally. You look at the word, come back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, in verse 31. Therefore, take no thought. That's a spoonful. We explain that. Saying, what shall we eat? The self-talk. We explain that. What shall we drink? A bite at a time. And then we went on. Wherewith us shall we be clothed? And then we said, for at all this is the Gentiles seek. Who are the Gentiles? The people of the world. And then how are they seeking it? They wake up early in the morning and they are rushing and rushing and say, don't be like the Gentiles. A spoonful at a time. And then we said for you, Heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. And that's how you study. You wake up in the morning, open your Bible and then you will read. And if you have a, if you don't know where to read, if you get a, a, get a copy of a such description, and then you'll find uh, the message or the study for searching the scriptures on Sunday. And at the end of such the scripture, you'll find what you can read and what you will read every day of that week. As you do that, you are going to be strong. I say you will be strong. Then you take a bite at a little at a time. And then it goes on now in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what we're looking at now. The demand of a false commitment. The demand of a false commitment. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Proverbs chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 17. Proverbs chapter 8. We're reading from verse 17. In Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Seek ye first. They that seek me early shall find me. And then it says if you're seeking first the Lord, he'll add many things to you. Look at verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Ye durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness. In the midst of the paths of judgment that I because those that love me to inherit substance. If you love the Lord, you know, if you love somebody, let's say you are living together in a house with your wife, with your husband, or with your children, or with your parents. If you really love one another, you wake up in the morning, you see one another, good morning, sir, good morning, mom, a good morning, my children, good morning, parents. You see, that, that's love. That's part of love. And then if you love the Lord, you wake up in the morning, you cannot see physical to say good morning or whatever, but then you go to his word. And that's what it says, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will feel their treasures. The Lord will bless you. 
was seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 2. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, that seek him with their whole heart. The blessing is reserved for the people who are seeking the Lord with their whole heart. Deuteronomy chapter 12. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 5. Seeking the Lord, seek ye first. Seek ye first. Make it your priority to seek the Lord first. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 5. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there. Even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither shall ye come. You see, as new converts are wondering, hey, where do I go to worship? It's the habitation of the Lord. How do I know the habitation of the Lord? That's exactly what it says there. Unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose. Out of all the tribes to put his name there. Have you noticed in all this crusade from Wednesday night until yesterday, Sunday, every time when I pray, I say, in Jesus' name. And the moment we mention in Jesus' name, the sick are healed. The people who are insane, they become well. And the people that are totally paralyzed, they just get up and, you know, they start walking. You had those testimonies yourself. And those, uh, one child that was born blind, 13 years of age now, the eyes got open. It means they put his name here. And then you say, I'm seeking the Lord. Where am I going to go to worship the Lord? Let me read it to you again. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all the tribes to put it his name there even unto his habitation shall ye seek you'll be looking for such a place where the name of Jesus is sweet wonderful, mighty, powerful miraculous and he has put his name here and so you don't need anybody to be dragging you and running after you you know this place now to seek the Lord see that thou shalt Come, you will come. In First Chronicles chapter twenty-two, First Chronicles chapter twenty-two, we're looking at verse nineteen. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and righteousness. Seek. In First Chronicles chapter twenty-two, verse nineteen. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Set your heart and your soul. To seek the Lord your God. Arise. Therefore, you know, when you wake up on Sunday morning, and you will not just be sleeping and sleeping. Arise. Prepare your heart. Prepare your soul to seek the Lord. And then it says over so, there, arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord and our district churches we ought to build those district churches I said was big those district churches and you know um, leaders when you are making announcement or when you are talking to you know the church you need to know how to talk and she talk excitedly and happily. That now see what the Lord has said. The Lord said we should seek his face. And build the sanctuary. And then we bring all the instruments of music and vessel. Bring it there and worship the Lord. When you then come. You, know, you go to tell the church. We just finished uh, our workers uh, retreat before this crusade. We did it uh, September 28 to 30 years. And it was a great and wonderful time. And the Lord challenged us that we need to rise up and build our district churches. If you're a worker, if you are here, you have heard. And you know, if we go back to the local church and then we say church, we just finish workers retreat and they said we should build district and they said and they said didn't you agree when you had it in the world? Well, you say that they said, if Nehemiah had gone to the Jews and they said, and they said, 
Will they build anything? Rise up and build your district church and let us have a glorious district church that will befit you good people who are worshipping there in Jesus name. It is not that they said almighty God said. Build a sanctuary for me. We're building the one at Bagada. That's the headquarters church. And what a wonderful church building that is. But that's not going to be the only building. In this city of Lagos, we're going to have hundreds of beautiful places of worship in Jesus' name. As you are contributing for the headquarters church, you are contributing for your own local church. And all these new converts, when they come there and they see all the pews and everything, praise the Lord. You know, not uh, pews like primary school children pews, but you know, good pews like, you know, these my choir people are sitting on in this hall one and they pad it and sit down like this and they say, I don't want to leave this church again. I want to stay here. That's how to seek the Lord. We're going to seek the Lord together in Jesus' name. You see, that's what we need to do. And if we do it with all our heart, the Lord will bless us. And the Lord will bless the work of our hand in Jesus' name. Seeking the Lord. Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7. We're looking at verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart. To seek the law of the Lord. Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. And to teach in Israel's statutes and judgments. He wanted to do it and he also wanted to teach it. We're told in uh, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, thank God you are risen with Christ. I said you are risen with Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. The Lord will help us. As we seek the face of the Lord, then we make the worship of the Lord the priority of our lives. And we make seeking the Lord, following the Lord, the priority of our lives. And we're saying, Lord, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That priority then will make us later be able to say, Lord, give us this day a daily bread. Put it in the proper order. Let God come first in your life. And then the rest of the blessings will follow in your life in Jesus' name. We come to point number three. Dependence on uh, point number three now. In point number three, I want to see what the Lord himself has said. The the declaration of a full comfort. The declaration of a full comfort. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. The second part of verse 33. And it says, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. They will be added unto me. I said they are going to be added unto me. He says, seek ye for the kingdom of God. And the assurance the Lord has given us is that if we seek first the kingdom of God, we can be sure all these other blessings the Lord will add unto us. Exodus chapter 23. In Exodus chapter 23, we're reading from verse 19. Exodus chapter 23. We're reading from verse 19. And you will see here what the Lord is saying in verse 19. In verse 19 it says, And the, um, the first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. The first of the first fruits of your land you bring ye to the house of the Lord that's seeking the kingdom of God first. And his righteousness. What's going to be the result? Look at verse 20. Behold, I will send an angel before thee. To keep thee in the way. To bring thee into the place which I have prepared for you. If you will seek for the kingdom of God. And the first fruits you bring unto the Lord. Then he says, I'm going to do the rest. I'll send an angel. He will protect you. And nothing will harm. Nothing will hurt your life. In Jesus name. In 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 9. 
First Kings chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord had told Solomon to pray and to ask him for anything that he wanted. Here is what Solomon prayed for. Give me the, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Do you see here the, the, the mind of Solomon? Do you see here the concern of Solomon? Do you see here the request of Solomon? It was putting forth the kingdom of God. It was putting forth the challenge that he needed to lead these children of Israel. And he wanted the help of God, the mercy of God. He wanted the wisdom of God. He wanted understanding from the Lord. And so he prayed. You know, he could have asked for other things. His own need first. His own request first. His own convenience first. His own desires first. But no. See what he asked. He said, Lord, you told me to ask anything. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. He says, you've given me great responsibility. How can I carry out this great responsibility without you? Without your strength? Without your wisdom? And then he said, that I may discern, that I may know, that I may be able to differentiate between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. You know, when you put God first in your life, then your life will please the Lord. When you put God first in your life, then your requests, your desires, your lifestyle, everything that you do will be pleasing unto the Lord. And then it says, and the speak please the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. Look at verse 11 now. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked for riches for thyself. Nor as nor as as the life of the enemies, but as as for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. The understanding he wanted, God gave him. The wisdom he wanted, God gave him. And the ability to be able to lead the skill to be able to lead the people of God that he desired so much, the Lord gave him. And then we're told in that verse 11, it says, God said, Because you have asked for this, verse 12 now, behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall there be any. Then he tells us in verse 13, I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. What a great lesson, what a great example, what a great encouragement. That even though Solomon had not asked for all these other things, God said, I'm so happy with your request. I'm so satisfied with your prayer. The things you have asked, I've given you. And even the things you have not asked in verse 13, I've given you both riches and honor. So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. In verse 14, if thou wilt walk, in my ways and to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did work then I will lend in thy days I pray God will give us wisdom and like God and Solomon he prayed the right kind of prayer that which you will pray the right kind of prayer Psalm 34 I'm reading from verse 9 Psalm 34, we're looking at verse 9. In verse 9, here is what it says. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want. That means there is no lack. There is no lack. There's no want to them that fear him. Put God first. Put his commandments first. And put yieldedness and submission to the Lord forth. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says all these things I'm going to add unto you. In verse 10, the young lions do, do lack and suffer hunger. 
But they that seek the Lord, that's the word, they that seek, to seek the Lord, they that seek the Lord shall not lack, shall not want any good thing. And then he tells us, look at First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. And you will see here how this was demonstrated in the life of a widow woman. First Kings chapter 17. I'm reading there from verse 11. And she was going to fetch it. He called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. She didn't have much. And yet the man of God said, Here is what she do. And you know why, the, why many people remain poor today? They come to the Bible study. And then they hear the word, the teaching from the word of God. And they say, but you know, look at my condition. And because of my condition, I cannot obey the word of God. This woman could have said, look at my condition. And because of my condition, how can I obey the word of God? But look at what happened. In verse, uh, in verse 13, and Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake. What's the next word? First. Make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it to me, and I have to make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not fail, shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. If you will carry out everything you hear the Bible study, no worry, no anxiety, and there is no fear. And there's no care. And you just say, yes, I had that at the Bible study. I'm just going to follow through everything. As this woman did, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did each many days. And then it says in verse 16, the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which is speak by Elijah. That word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. In Proverbs chapter 3, we're looking at verses 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, when you've done that, all these things shall be added unto you. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And you know there are some people that say it's only my heart that God wants. Are you reading your Bible? Other people say it's only holiness that God wants. Yes, he wants holiness, righteousness, and your heart. He also wants your substance. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits, first fruits, first fruits. Of an increase, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty. If you want plenty, then so much, give much, bring to the house of the Lord. Don't come empty handed. And then it says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. I thought you'll say, Amen. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring ye all the tithes. A tenth of your income. Bring ye to the Lord. And then you'll be a wise man. Because through that the Lord will prosper you. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. 
that there may be meat in mine house and probe me now here we says the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and pour you out a blessing when you bring your tithes when you bring your offering when you bring what you want to give in the house of the lord not that you, you forget you always forget when you're going to the market you don't forget to take money with you when you're going to your office you don't forget to take the bus transportation fee with you hey, why is it it's only when you're coming to the house of the lord you forget you're cheating yourself and denying yourself of great blessings bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and probe me now here with says the lord of hosts if i will not Open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And then he said that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field. Says the Lord of hosts and all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts that's what he has promised and that is what he will do we're looking at uh, the word of god in mark chapter 13 verse 10 mark chapter 13 verse 10 and something shall come first in your life that's the kingdom of god the establishment of the kingdom of god the expansion of the kingdom of god and then bringing that kingdom of God into the hearts of people. That should come first in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And as a result of that priority and commitment, all these things shall be added unto you. Mark chapter 13 verse 10. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. That should be your priority. That seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. Making sure that the sin that holds your mind, the sin that moves you, is a preaching of the gospel. Preaching this gospel of the kingdom first in all nations. You know there are people that do not put that first. They put other things first and the Lord condemned such people. In Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9 verse 59. Luke chapter 9. Verse 59, and he said unto another, follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. He didn't put the kingdom of God first. He put another sin, a personal sin, a personal agenda. He put that first. And then Jesus said in verse 60, Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Make the kingdom of God number one. Make it priority in your life. Verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first you know these people that have other things are forced apart from the kingdom of God and righteousness. Apart from the preaching of the gospel and the expansion of the kingdom of God. They have another thing forced. It says, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go be them farewell which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back his feet for the kingdom of God. Such people disqualify themselves. But you know, when you just say, oh Lord, I'm going to serve you and worship you. I'm not going to put any other thing first, but you will be first in my life. Then the blessings of God will flow into your life. Genesis chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 15. Genesis chapter 22, reading from verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. You see, he put God first. God tested him. God said, give me your son. 
And this is a son he had been waiting for for many years. It was a bundle of laughter and joy in the family. And God said, can you give me that bundle of laughter you have? Isaac, he didn't waste time. He made God first in his life. And they were told in verse 17, and that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sun, which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall, shall possess the, the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Listen to this. Because, because, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And if you obey the word of God you are hearing tonight, it will bring blessing upon your life. Because God told Abraham, because, because, because thou hast obeyed my voice, this is what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to bless you tremendously and abundantly. Look at Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. I'm reading from verse 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. Has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. And then it says, While he was zealous for my sake, among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. And what happened here is the children of Israel went into sin. And it was not just an individual person committing one sin. It came to many, many people in the land of Israel. And God was angry with them. And God said, I'm going to destroy them. And then this man, Phinehas. He knew that we have to deal with the sin. He put God first. He didn't put the comments of the people first. If I deal with this sin, what will people say about me? Just put yourself first. He put God first. He didn't say, will people love me? Will they like me if I deal with this sin in the camp? No. He put God first. And then he dealt with those people, disciplined them the Old Testament way. as they committed the sin. And God said, Moses, see what Phinehas has done. While well, everybody was just folding their hands and looking on. And sin was multiplying. And then God said, because he has done this, look at verse 12. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. And he shall have it. And his seed after him, even the covenant and of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God. He put God first. And as you look at the district church, you look at the local church, you look at the church in the group, or you look at the central church. If you see anybody committing sin and that sin is influencing other people to sin, you just fold your hand. You're not putting God first. I will not talk. So that nobody will say, I'm the big mouth that is always talking. I'm the big mouth that allowed so and so to be put in discipline. I will not, you don't love the Lord. You are just, you just think about yourself. And you're not putting God first. You're not putting the righteousness of God first. But Phinehas, he put God first. And he put the righteousness of God for us. And God said, because he was zealous for his God. And made an atonement for the children of Israel. And then it goes on to say, those people that committed the sin that Phinehas had to discipline. I pray God will give us this priority of love for the Lord. Give me a good amen. amen. So that we don't just see sin multiplying. And evil things going on. And then we just, we, we turn the other way. We don't want to challenge that thing. Because we're afraid of what the people will say. And because we're not putting God first in our lives. We should have the zeal of the Lord. That you say, I don't care what the people think. I don't care what the people say. 
God and his righteousness is going to be forced in my life. In uh, Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, putting God first. You see what had happened? He sent out, Moses sent out 12 spies. And the ten of the spies came back and they said, We're not able. There are giants in the land. And they discouraged the people of God. Only Caleb and Joshua, they put God first. Why are we afraid of our lives? Why are we afraid to go and face the giants? Let us go up at once. They put God first. The other people say, but no, we cannot. And Joshua stood up and Caleb stood up. Even at the risk of their lives. That the Israelites wanted to stone them. Nobody wants to stone you in the district. You see error there. You see sin there. You see all those things there. You cannot defend righteousness. You see your neighbors. You see your friends. They are tearing down. The standard of righteousness and holiness. You cannot defend righteousness. You're putting yourself forth. I don't want them to talk about me. I don't want anybody to say, I am the one that is always seeing that things are not good. I don't want any problem from anybody. I don't want insult from anybody. They'll be looking at me now with the corner of their eyes and they will say that I'm the holy, holy, deeper life. I'm the one that is taking this thing too far. You are afraid of what they'll say about you. Put God first and forget yourself. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, All these things shall be added unto you. Fight sin and demolish all those structures of sin the people are putting up. And say, like Caleb, have a different spirit. God first in my life. Righteousness and holiness first in my life. It is when you do that, the blessings of God will come upon you. How many Caleb's do we have today? You know what we have? People who are cringing. People who are afraid. We know the standard. We know the word. And when other people are destroying the standard, we just, you know, we, we stay back. I don't want them to talk about me. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, all these things shall be added unto you. Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. But my servant Caleb. Because he had another spirit within him. And then he says. And has followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land. Wherein, wherein to he went. And his seed shall possess it. It is because he put the honor and the glory of God first. And he didn't care what the other ten will say about him. That's why God said, I'm going to bless him. And then if you read Joshua, you see it says, 40 years and five was at that time. Now look at me, 80, 80, 85 years. I'm still as strong as ever. And he said, Joshua, you were there. When the Lord spoke to me through Moses, Give me this mountain. You will have the mountain. If you will stand for righteousness. If you will stand for the Lord. And you are not looking for the praise of man. But to seek the kingdom of God first. And his righteousness. Then all these blessings shall be added unto you. And then there will be nothing to worry about. I said there will be nothing to worry about. They talk about you, nothing to worry about. They insult you, nothing to worry about. They mention your name, nothing to worry about. Because you know, the Lord is on your side because you are seeking first. What are you seeking first? Tell me out loud. And what? Righteousness. Stand up and promise the Lord. Stand up and promise the Lord. You are going to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. You are not afraid of what the people will say. They are destroying the standard of holiness and you know it. You cannot talk. You cannot act. You cannot give yourself to the Lord and say, whatever they say, whatever they do, I am going to defend righteousness. I'm going to stand 
But this word of God, open your mouth and talk to the Lord. And in all this work we need to do, you give it priority. Seeking the souls that need to know the Lord, that need to go deeper in the Lord. Seeking them, not allowing them to perish. And putting your work aside now, putting your own job aside now, and seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, you've given me so much. Learning these days, you've given me so much. And I'm offering my life, my time, my will, my skill, my talent, my treasure. Everything I have, I'm laying it upon the altar. I'm seeking for the kingdom of God. Give the Lord your heart. Give the Lord your soul. Give the Lord everything that you have got. And it is only when you do that, you are going to find that the blessings of the Lord will be mighty upon your life. Tell the Lord, take my life. Let it be wholly, fully, completely consecrated, Lord, unto thee. Make the kingdom of God of the first priority in your life. Take my life. Lord, I give it unto you. Let it be consecrated unto you. Take my moments and my days. Take my time. My hours. Take my time, my moments, my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let God become number one in your life. Not your convenience as number one. Not ease of life, number one. Not food and raiment, number one. Not job, not money, number one. The kingdom of God and his righteousness as number one. And in the church. You're not looking for a good name. Good name is not number one. Righteousness is number one. Not seeking for cheap honor. Cheap appreciation. That's not number one. Righteousness, holiness is number one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. Not friends. Friendship. That's not number one. You know, people don't rebuke sin. I want people to like me. I want people to be friends with me. I want people to appreciate me. That's your number one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The kingdom and righteousness is number one. Not having friends, compromising, not challenging sin. Not rebuking sin. Seeing hypocrisy. And you know it's hypocrisy. You cannot correct people. You cannot talk to people. Why are you doing that? If you love the Lord. If you're giving your heart to the Lord. You want to be a good example to these newcomers who are just coming in. And it is the priority you have. The newcomers will have. The priority of the kingdom of God. The priority of righteousness. The priority of holiness. And if you see Phineas. If you look at the Phineas. You're not discouraging him. You're not insulting him. You'll not hinder him. You'll not say any kind of word. To discourage him. You encourage the Phineas. That wants the righteousness of God as number one. And you yourself would like to follow after that example of Phineas. Deal with sin. You tell the Lord. Me and Abraham. He gave his best to the Lord. His very best unto the Lord. That's seeking God first and his righteousness. It's only then all these other blessings will be added unto you. You're not a compromising Christian, a compromising believer. You're a standing believer with conviction. And you're saying, Lord, I dedicate myself, my life to you afresh. 
I'm going to seek your kingdom first and your righteousness. Lord, take my will, make it thine own. It shall no longer be mine. Take my heart, it is thine throne, thine own. It shall be the royal throne. And take my love. My Lord, I pour at thy feet his treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever, only, all, always for thee. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. No compromise, no backsliding. No encouragement of sin. Be Phinehas, be an Abraham, be a Caleb. Then you are sure, if you seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things.